and you know get to know a little bit more about your businesses. So you know if you can, uh, if you see me and hear me okay, just go ahead and put your business name in the comment section. You know if you have a business, if you are an entrepreneur, you know we want to hear from you. We want to know more about you. Go ahead and put your business name and maybe where you're from in the comments in the chat. And uh, we're going to get started here in less than two minutes. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming on in. I'm going to learn a lot about business credit and funding today. All right. And don't forget to go ahead and send this link and the password to, you know, somebody else that might you know, not have been able to jump on here uh, right now, but you know, needs the information and, um, you know, we'll, we'll help them out too, you know. Okay. Just a few more seconds left before we get started. All right, well, let's see what kind of businesses we have here. All right, all right, we have V Solutions 360. Uh, so shout out to Michelle Borges in California. Rodrika says she can't hear. Can everybody else hear okay? You can come off mute. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Yes. Jamie says. I can hear you. Awesome, awesome. So if you can't hear, try leaving the group and coming back on in and seeing if, see if that helps. Sorry if you can't. Oh, says fixed. I'm good. All right. That's my fault. I just got to read a little bit longer. All right. So if you're just coming in, go ahead and drop your business down in the comment section and where you're from. Okay. And got some more people trying to come in. Well, thanks so much for coming on out, everybody. You can be doing anything. I know you have businesses to run. I'm seeing it. Uh, Marcus Anderson, All Solutions LLC. Thanks for coming on out. Rodrika Jefferson, Beauty's Image, Licensed Cosmetologist in Florida. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for coming on out. A1 Dealership Services and Transportation. Oh, wow. We do have a lot of businesses in the building today. So without further ado, at 701. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, you know, my name is Jer Jerry Goins and seeing some more people joining. So I'm just trying to make sure I get everybody in. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, you know me, I like to get started on time. You know, uh, you can go ahead and catch the replay. You know, if you inbox me, I'll send you the replay for anything that you missed. But, you know, we also want to make sure that if you need a consultation, you get back with me or the financial consultant that invited you to tonight's information so that you can get some customized one on one attention. All right. Again, my name is Jerry Goins from Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, hey, I have many businesses, but I've realized that you can't really grow and you can't really scale any business if you don't have proper funding. And so I realized that using your personal credit, that is a fast ticket nowhere okay you're going to max out your credit cards your credit score is going to plummet right and then you can't get any more funding it's just going to leave you in the middle uh, i ran across some phenomenal information some life-changing information with this company nove that allowed me to then scale my business have several uh credit lines now getting approved for funding to where if i didn't have this information i don't know where i would be you know, now we're helping entrepreneurs all across the country realize the same information, improve their personal credit, improve their business credit, and show them how to get a guaranteed 50000 in funding. Just think about what 50000 in funding would do for your personal business. And we're doing it, um, you know, basically in three to six months. 
So just depending on where you are in your business, three to six months from now, we can have you with a fully built out credit profile. We can have your personal credit looking much better than it does right now. And we can have you on progress to get that $50,000 guarantee. So I love what we do here. We're serving entrepreneurs all over the country. If you have any questions, feel free to just interrupt, come off mute. And, you know, I want this to be a, a good, like a meeting style. Because uh, I know sometimes there's webinars and you can't ask those questions. And you wait till the end and nobody gets to them. So just feel free to stop me wherever you have a question. And we'll go ahead and get that addressed. Uh, if not, you want to put it in the chat and we'll get to it at the end. So let's go ahead and get going. So what are we here to discuss? Understanding what business credit is, business credit versus personal credit, the benefits of business credit, 10 mandatory items to get business credit approval, the exact steps and tiers of credit to apply for and when. That's the big, the win is, is huge. All right. And how to get started the right way with building your business credit or getting money this week. Okay, so we also, what is that? Who is calling me? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's not good. Tell them to stop. <laughs> it is ringing on myself too. You know what? I bet it's somebody trying to get in the meeting. Yep. Let me decline it real quick. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, sorry about that. Um, but let's get back to it. So making sure that you're able to get money this week is really key as well. So I'm going to set you up with some action steps, some things you can take away from right now. Um, well, so what is business credit? It plays an important role in any business's success, but it's the least thing that's talked about, especially when you go to entrepreneurship um, courses, when you go like I know the college that I went to, I was one of the first people in what's called an entrepreneurship course where they just taught different subjects about entrepreneurship they brought in speakers and everything and nobody talked about business credit well business credit is credit that's obtained in the business's name about 45 percent of business owners don't even know that they have a business credit score so that means that half of the people on this line right now don't even know what business credit is and that's okay because that's why you get tuned in and i'm going to help you and that's according to the sba with business credit a business builds its own credit profile and a score for its ein number Okay, so everybody knows what the EIN number is. That's like a social security number, but it's for your business instead of your social, which is for your personal. Um, this is credit that is built in the business's name is based on the business's ability to pay, not the business owners. That's exactly why you are here because you want to be able to leverage a separate credit profile legally, ethically, and morally. Okay, so why should you... Uh, build business credit, well, it definitely doubles your borrowing ability. Some experts say it even 10Xs your borrowing ability, and it makes your business more lendable when you have business credit. Business credit is the only financial solution that you can get regardless of cash flow, collateral, or consumer credit. People know that in the industry as the three Cs of uh, business credit. It's also the three C's of lending in general. They want to know if your cash flow is looking right. They want to know if you if you have collateral, meaning something that they can uh, sell for you in case you default on the loan, right? And they also want to know about your consumer credit profile anytime you go to get a loan. Well, what if your cash flow isn't good because maybe you just started the business? What if you have no collateral? And what if your credit is in the dumps? Maybe you just got through with a bad divorce, a foreclosure. Uh, maybe your cards just all hit at the same time, you got them all closed out. So what if that's happening right now with your personal credit? You probably think that you have no solutions, but I'm here to tell you, business credit is the solution that you need. And it means any business can obtain it, even nonprofits, even startups, all right? So if you have a startup business, go ahead and put startup in the comment section. All right, we'll give you a shout out here as well. Now, business credit benefits this is what I really love about business credit, you all. It's only based on one factor, okay? Payment history, okay? So with the personal credit, you know, that's based on multiple factors. You got to keep up with your payment history, your credit mix, your credit age, you know, all that. But with here, once you build the business credit, there's no PG. And I don't mean a movie rating, okay? A PG just means no personal guarantee. That means that you are not liable for the debts. Your business is. 
eventually you'll be able to fill out business loan applications to get funding and not even need to put your social on there. You just put your EIN and the checks go against your business credit profile, not against you personally. Initially, we're going to do that on some account types, and eventually we're going to be able to do that on all uh, account types. Perfect for startups, no cash flow requirements. And it gives you the competitive advantage. Now, I know a lot of people that got on because they figured, hey, I can get some extra money, get some breathing room. But let me tell you what you really got on here. And it's the competitive advantage that having business credit yields you. You probably got started um, at the same time another business did down the street. And you notice, man, how do they get their vans already wrapped and their staff all have, you know, matching uniforms and their signs, they have the neon signs and everything's lighting up and they have the most advanced equipment and the most top of the line equipment when I walk in there. Like, how do they get that? Because they just opened. They can't be that profitable. What you're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is business credit, all right? So you want to be able to have that competitive advantage over the others in your industry by being able to leverage OPM, and that's other people's money. So what we help you do here is we help make sure your business is set up credibly, okay? And that means you're able to get credit, and we help you get up set up with set up with the business CRAs and get your report. Now, the business CRAs, that's just a credit reporting agencies. Okay, there's three predominant business reporting agencies or credit reporting agencies, just like there's three predominant uh, credit bureaus on your personal. Okay, so I'm going to help you get funded. So who are we? Our company is called Nove. It just means new beginnings. And that's an, exactly what we intend to provide you with is a new beginning for your business. You know, imagine what $50,000 could do for you. Imagine what a few hundred points on your credit score could do for you as well. Well, that's exactly what we're here for. We inspire people to get more out of life. We educate them on how to go about it. And then we provide opportunities to make it happen. I personally believe you can't be successful unless you have all three things. Like a lot of us were inspired to start their own business. Maybe we saw that there was a missing product in the industry that we needed to get and it wasn't there. So we were inspired to do it. And then we got the education. We started to say, hey, well, I need maybe an engineer on my team, or maybe I need a, an expert chef to help put this all together. Uh, so you got educated on how to do that. But then you just didn't have the opportunity. You didn't have the money. You didn't have the financing. No one really taught you how to actually put this business plan in place. So you just didn't have the opportunity. You missed out on that last thing. And that's what we're here to fill out. Um, any step in that ladder, um, that's what we're here for. This is the CEO of our company, so I just want to let you know, hey, this isn't the Jerry show. You know, I'm just a witness of what this company has done for myself and for others, countless others, thousands and thousands of other people under the leadership of one Rico McDaniel McCambry. Today is actually uh, Rico McDaniel McCambry Day in his hometown, and he actually gave away um, money to 200 students in five different schools in his area of the lowest income earning schools in the area. I knew that was going to happen. Um, and he wiped their uh, student lunch debt and also gave them a cushion. This is something I didn't even realize because growing up, I had free lunch, you know, but there are students that actually, you know, pay for lunch. And when you can't pay for your own lunch, they give you what's called wel welfare lunch, which is a sandwich and a milk. And all the students know that, hey, you got welfare lunch. Well, one of the things that he said on his announcement today was, you know what, I went out and I got the list of the names of those students that were that had the, the debt and I cleared the debt for him. And that's what he, he did on his day to day. And he does that every year. Um, I don't want to park here too long, but I just wanted to impart on you that we're not talking about somebody that's here just to make a lot of money. We're talking about here somebody that's here to make an impact. And as you already read on the screen, he's highly decorated. His accolades reach as far as the Forbes Business Council and helping uh, remove over a million negative items from clients' credit reports. All right. So let's tackle business credit benefits because, I mean, I, I kind of glazed over business credit benefits. But well, let's go ahead and get into some some tactile things now so you can actually see and see what's going on. OK. I see someone's needing the code. Somebody send that to them so they won't keep calling there. All right. So you can be issued a failing score for your business, even if you have no credit reporting. So it's kind of like having a thin file on the personal side where you don't have any cars or anything like that going on. So 
they give you a failing score. And this on the business side, it's because you look unestablished, possibly on the verge of filing for bankruptcy because you have nothing reporting. So this is an example of what the lenders are looking at. Uh, in this case, it says, hey, you know, zero, 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 all the way down the line. And their business credit score is medium risk. Um, and their financial stability score is medium to high risk. And on the, in the, on the paydex, they're way down here on a six. That's, that's incredible. And the factors contributing to this is lack of active trades. If you see way down here at the bottom, it says lack of active trades. Okay. And that's because they don't have anything reporting at all. So even one account reporting, one account reporting, which we can give you immediately here. You'll, you've, I'm going to give you a few of them that you can go ahead and um, add. Can go can help you get from no score or a failing score to a great score. So just by adding this net thirty account here, for example, you can look at look at the improvement in this person's business credit profile. Now they're low risk, and now they're way up here at a ninety six. All right, out of a hundred. On, on this score here. So the average age of commercial accounts is only that's holding them back now. So I just want you to know business credit, you can build business credit like that. It doesn't take very long at all. Okay. And I do want to explain what a net 30 account is because that's a term that's used in the financial world to describe a trade line where the merchant will give you a net 30 account. That means you can come to that merchant and you can buy whatever up to that credit limit. Let's say this store gave you a $1,000 uh, net 30 account. Well, this one, uh, let's say is $100, okay? So they give you a $100 net 30 account. That means you can spend up to $100 at that store, but in 30 days, you have to pay it off. So let's say I spent $50 on the first of the month. I'd have to pay off that $50 uh, purchase by the first of next month. Um, and let's say I spent the other $50 on the 18th of the month. Well, then I have until the 18th to pay that off. That's called a net 30 account. It doesn't go by, hey, you know, every first of the month the bill is due or every 13th of the month the bill is due. It goes by the date of that invoice. So um, that's what that looks like. Anytime you see a net 30, uh, you're going to see net 30 a lot, but you also might see something called a net 60. That means you have 60 days. You also might see something that's called a net 15 or a net 10. You never, never, never want to use a net 10 account or a net 15 account because what ends up happening is by the time you get the product in the mail, you, you know, because most times they got to ship it to you, then you got to verify that, you know, the product is good, then you got to pay for it. Now, we all know with credit co companies, you go to pay for something, it takes like three days, right? So by the time they process it, you're, you're already behind or you're paying right on time which you want to pay early if you want the best business credit score. And I'll show you that in just a little bit. But it basically gives you no chance to get the best score. So always do net 30. Uh, business credit benefits. Um, getting more into the, more business credit benefits. As you continue to grow your business credit, uh, they're going to give you higher and higher limits. Okay, so as you can see, this person right here, this business credit is, is now uh, approved for 15 thousand six hundred is the recommendation so the lender is looking at a dashboard that looks like this it pops up a little score uh, so with the first guy here you see three different trade accounts up here recommendation is fifteen thousand now that they have added even more uh, they added about 12 accounts on here and now their credit limit recommendation is seven hundred and twenty four thousand dollars you would fall out of your seat, okay? After building your business credit and you go into the bank, well, actually you're gonna use our institutions because the bank is not the place to go for business credit. But I just say bank because everybody's familiar with that. You go into the bank and they say, hey, we can approve you for $700,000. Um, you know, which account do you want us to send the money to? Wow. And that's all because you have uh, this many trade lines going on on your business credit profile. And you know, one thing I do want to establish here is because a lot of um, fraud has been going on in the credit industry, right? If you ever heard of a CPN before, just, just give me a frowny emoji. Just be like, give me a disgusting or a vomit face, a CPN, right? So what a CPN does is it allows somebody to obtain a different social security number than the one that they have. 
Um, and if it's not, if it, if you're able to do it successfully, it looks like you have a brand new credit profile, but those are highly illegal because it's actually fraud. But this is what some credit gurus out here do is they give you a CPN number. Now you have two credit profiles, your real one and this fake one. Well, celebrities use the CPN to really, you know, you can legitimately use a CPN to you know, hide and protect your true identity, but it's not supposed to be used for credit repair, you know, but business credit, you can legally have two credit profiles. And I can prove that it's legit because Experian, one of the largest credit um, bureaus in the world, they say, they have a, a, on their blog, they say, small business credit, how separating your business credit from your personal credit can help you grow your small business. <laughs> so if they think that is a good idea, why don't you have a business credit profile going? NASDAQ, okay, so they list the top companies in the country right? So they list the stocks for those top companies. They have a blog that says your small business should have its own credit score. Okay. These are the big dogs in the industry advocating for having a business credit score. You can build this thing pretty fast. Okay. Remember there's five factors on the personal side, but there's only one factor on the business side and that's on time payment history. So here's how that business paydex score breaks down. So uh, paydex is similar to a FICO score. Okay, so your FICO score is on your personal, you know, it goes up to 850. On your paydex, it goes up to 100. So if you pay early, that's the 100. That's why I say don't get that net 15 account because it's almost impossible to pay it early. The payment is prompt, you get an 80. If it comes in 14 days beyond the terms, you got a 70. Okay, and this is the average of when you're paying. Okay, so as it keeps going down and down and down, you obviously don't want to be anywhere down there. You want to actually be at an 85 or better. That right there is like being at a 780 or better because you, as many people know, once you have a 780 score, there's not much difference between having a 780 and an 850. Okay, that's just considered good credit. So here you want to be above 850 or 85 and up. That's your paydex score. Okay, so this person here would have a 96 paydex score. Um, looking at this meter, this is what the lender would see. And they say, okay, yeah, let's give them some money. Let's give them some money, all right? So once you build that business credit, again, no PG, initial limits will range from you know, being very small in the beginning. So here's some examples that we were able to help uh, business owners get. A $5,000 credit decision from Dell, a $15,000 Murphy Express card. So um, you know, that's what we call a gas card. Um, we got Anthony $2,000 Stables Advantage program um, credit line and a $1,500 uh, net 30 account off from Office Max for Lena. Now these start off small, but do not despise small beginnings because as you've seen in a few slides back, it doesn't take very many uh, profiles reporting to build strong business credit. That's why it's perfect for startups, no cash flow uh, requirements, and it gives you the competitive advantage that you need. Now, another thing about competitive advantage is when you see another business in your industry going out of business, you get to swoop in and buy all of their clearance items and liquidated items for like half off, okay, for 80%, 90% off. When you see another restaurant going out of business and you're a restaurant and you know they got the top of the line refrigerator that you've been looking at, because you have business credit, you can go in and purchase that. Otherwise, you don't have that cash sitting on side to go ahead and swoop up things like this. It gives you that competitive advantage, no collateral, easier to grow a business. Now, every highly successful business in America has business credit and I'll prove it. So business credit is actually uh, public. You know, anybody can actually look at your business credit profile, unlike your personal. You know, you have to give people permission to see that. But business credit is, par is public knowledge. So Pilot Travel, 153 trade lines. Publix, the supermarket, 171 trade lines. Dell, 83. Microsoft, 131. Facebook, even Facebook has business credit, 40 trade lines. Apple, 138 trade lines. But the number one Mac daddy of them all, Walmart. In fact, 80% of what you see on the shelf of Walmart has been purchased using business credit. That means if you go to the Walmart and you put 10 items in your cart, eight, um, eight of them, Walmart has not even paid for yet. Okay, they're waiting on you to come and buy that product, and then they're going to use your money to pay their vendors. How smart is that? 
Walmart is the largest uh, retailer, brick and mortar retailer in the world. This is what they do. So here you come with your shop and you think, oh, I don't need business credit. I'm good. <laughs> I'll get it out the mud. You know, I don't want to be in debt, right? But this is how the biggest companies in the world grow their business. 513 trade lines is probably another one added on there after I shot this. Okay. So, you know, I just want to let you know that this is the biggest, this is what the big dog's doing. So you want to follow that trend. New businesses can get credit too. Clean Slate Credit Solutions is one of our partners. Eight trade lines, they're reporting to Experian. Now, how do you build business credit? First, you got to make sure that you're set up credibly. Okay, so this is the part where you can start taking notes, get your pen and pencil. But first, I had to set the scene so you understood how important it is. You had to understand why you even need it. You understand why it's different from personal credit, right? But now you get to take some notes and we're going to get, okay, I see the note pens. Good, 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 good. All right, Kaylin, I see you with your startup. That's right. All right, so let's get it. So number one, we got to take care of your entity. That's number one. Everybody should have a business plan anyway when you start a business, okay? But your entity is number one. So an entity, that's an LLC, limited liability company. That's an LLP, limited liability partnership. That's a corporation or an S corp. It is also a sole proprietorship but you do not want to have a sole proprietorship or a sole prop. You will not get funded with a sole prop. That just means that you have a DBA, like you went down to the local county office and you said, hey, I have a business and I'm doing business as this business name. That's great when you're getting started, but it's not great when you're trying to take it to that next level, when you're trying to get funding. Okay, so this right here, everybody should have an LLC at the minimum. Uh, you can run it as an S Corp. S Corp is really just a tax status. It's not really an entity. But you can uh, also have a corporation. Um, I recommend a corporation if you have a lot of employees. Like once you get into 20 and 30 employees, you need a corporation. Now you're going to start to save money on the um, on payroll taxes. But um, all right. I'll stop there for just a second. Anybody have any questions about establishing your identity? Your, I mean, your entity. Going once, going twice. All right. So next is your business address. Now that you know what your business is going to be, you need a business address so that you can use this business address when you file your paperwork with the Secretary of State. Okay, now your business address cannot be your home address. Hello, <laughs> can't be your home address because guess what the lenders are going to do? They're gonna take your address that you put on the application, they're gonna type it into Google, you know? And when they pull that up, they're gonna to go to the street view. When they go to the street view, they're gonna see, is this a house? Is this a trailer? Is this an apartment? Is this a town home? Or is it in a commercial zone? Is it an actual office building? Now, let me ask you personally, if you had $100,000 to give away and businesses were applying for it and they gave you your address and you're trying to make sure that you're gonna get this money back, right? What are you gonna do with that application? When you type that on in and see, hey, let me make sure this is actual business. And would you give that application to somebody who was working out of their home? Or would you give it to somebody that was working out of an actual office? See, so basically what I'm trying to say is you got to be, there's people behind this. So you have to be a person and understand how people think. But each thing that we're doing with this, we're building business credit, we're detaching ourselves from our business. Okay. Detach yourself from your business. Put that in the comment section. Detach yourself from your business. You don't want the same entity because you're going to not use your social. So the business needs its own entity. It needs to be its own person, right? Now you don't want to have the same address. Here's my home address. Here's my business address. Remember, your business address is public knowledge. Anybody can go to the Secretary of State, look up your business, and see what the address is, okay? You don't want that to be your home, especially if you're a work-from-home millionaire, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like myself, right? <laughs> I don't want anybody showing up at my door. <laughs> so you want to use a 
business address. Okay, so get with your financial consultant right after this. If you don't have a business address, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Okay, any questions on business address? Going once, going twice. All right. Next is your phone number. Everything that you have, you want to duplicate for your business and detach for your business. So you have your own phone number, but now your business needs one. So your cell phone provider, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, they will have a business division. You can get a phone number there. You can also get a free, well, not a free, but you can get a toll-free number, like an 800 number. That's what I really recommend. Get with your financial consultant after this. They'll show you what you can do to get a business number for around $10 a month, an 800 number. Okay. These are the things that you're putting on your applications when you when you are uh, looking for funding how about your email and website wow i didn't think that this was as important as it is but your business has to have a website and an email address because again i'm a lender i have 100 mil 100,000 however much i have to give away and hope that i get back plus interest if i have a business application that comes up here I'm just gonna pick on somebody here. Let me see who I, who I got here. Okay, Marcus. So Marcus, Marcus's world at gmail.com, right? Are, am I gonna give Marcus the money or am I gonna give uh, K Parker at kparkerindustries.com the money? Who am I gonna give the money to? K Parker Industries, cause she has her own domain. Whereas Marcus is using his Gmail account, which is free. I don't know if Marcus just went in and made this Gmail account just to apply for this a few seconds ago. Everybody picking up. You got to have your own domain that establishes yourself as a true business owner. If you don't have a domain, you're not only leaving money on the table, but you don't look very credible. And it's incredible to me how many people don't have their own domain, but it's okay because there's, there's a lot to know about setting that up. So get with your financial consultant that invited you and just say, hey, I need a domain. They can give you some recommendations each step of the way. Any questions about email and website? Go on once. Okay. So, your licenses and other docs. Now it just depends on what industry you're in, but you're gonna have to actually have some licensing and some documentation. It just depends, you know? If you're a veterinarian, obviously you need to be able to license, be licensed to do that. If you have a restaurant, you're gonna need sanitation grade and inspection score and all this kind of, you know? So make sure you have all those documents, that's easy. Your business listing congruency. This is really, really key. This just means that your business information lines up every place that they check. When they check your Google listing, they see the same address, they see the same phone number, they see the same email. When they check your yellow pages um, or your 411 directory, they see the same business address, email, phone. When they see your website, the same business address, email, phone. You want to stay very consistent. I personally operate out of a notebook. So I use Evernote and I have all my business information in one of the notes. Whenever I go to apply or set up a business, I go direct, directly to that note and I just copy and paste. Even though I know all the information, I still copy and paste because I know it's going to be the same thing going down the line. All right. So now you want to get that EIN number. Now you've got all this stuff lined up. Go ahead and get your EIN number. This is free. Okay, you just go to irs.gov, get your EIN number. This is your the social for your business. A lot of people start off with the EIN number. I guess they want to get it out of the way, you know, because it's you know it's so. Uh, I guess it's just like the pinnacle of having a business is having that EIN number. But you want to get some things knocked out of the way first before you get that EIN number, because then when you apply for your EIN, now you can use that business address. Now you can use that business phone number. Now you can uh, make sure that everything is lined up and you have the right entity. So then when you apply, 
it's already on record and you don't have to do an amendment. Well, you, don't, you actually can't even amend this. So if you were to change your information, you have to get a whole new EIN number. Let's say you change your address. Now you got to get a whole new EIN number and start building business credit for that. Okay, so if you um, have already started with the EIN process, but you don't have the, uh, the address or anything like that, you want to go ahead and just start off, start now. Just, just forget about that EIN. I know it's aged. I know that matters. But also having a business address instead of your personal address matters. That's even more important. Okay, so many people are stuck with this conundrum right here. Okay, any questions about the EIN number? Go once. Going twice. All right. Hello, I have a question. I just unmuted. Hey, hey, how you doing? Your name, please. Carol. Um, Thanks, girl. Um, okay, so I'm kind of in the same conundrum you just spoke of because um, I got a P.O. box, uh, not a P.O. box, but a street address, address, and um, I applied for my, uh, what's the one, the text, there's the LLC and the, the EIN. So mm -hmm. I applied for the LLC with the right address, and then the next day I applied for the 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 EIN number or the tax ID number, and I made a mistake, and I put I made a typographical mistake with the address, like a number, mm -hmm. and it said uh, there was no way to call. There is no forms online. There is a form, but it's not a quick change. It's a print it mm -hmm. down and fill it out and mail it in. Mm -hmm. So I did that, but then I felt very yucky about it. <laughs> it just yeah. seemed like that's the six weeks or six months kind of thing. And I'm waiting to open my bank account. Yeah. Just get a new one. Just start from scratch. Start from scratch. It'd be um, much faster. You know, you can get that EIN number as soon as you finish with that app, especially since you just got it. You know, it's not like you, well, I'm assuming you haven't had that EIN for years. Well, actually, I kind of did. I just okay. didn't for just a year, for a year. Oh, and okay. I didn't have my bank account. So I've been using my personal checking account mm -hmm. for the period. And so I wanted to get that straightened out and start off, you know, the new year on the right foot. Yeah. But yeah. when I made that mistake, I was like, so what do I do now? You know, I filled it out and I mailed it in. So that process is already started. All right, you know, I don't know what, what I should do in this case. Yeah, if you want, the, the quickest way is just to get a new one, honestly. Um, I've had people do that process where they try to like change the address on it and sometimes they get denied and then they have to just get one anyway. It's like, what's the point? I waited six weeks just to get denied. What? And they have to get a new one anyway. Why would it get denied? Uh, I mean, they for, can't in, my case, I'm, in my case, I'm dyslexic and I just, you know, wrote the, the wrong number. And so I, I made that change. Yeah, it should be very easy to say, hey, this person made a, a quick typographical error. But yeah, remember, it's not a computer on the other side, it's a person. Right. So people be, you know, hey, this looks kind of sketchy. They just deny it. You know, they, they want to have a, uh, they don't, they really do not like changing information for EIN numbers because it is a breeding ground for fraud. Mm. Imagine if you can change your social, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that would change yeah. my for quickness. <laughs> You know, so, so, so yeah, not a lot of people want to even do that at all. So when someone is doing it, you, know, you want to make sure that it's for a good reason. Changing that address, making sure that's legitimate and it's, and it's stationary, that's really what they want. They don't, they don't right. like it and stuff. So but. I already have the, the, the address. I already have the address. Well, uh, let me ask you that too, because you said you have a street address, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's at an office park or? Um, it's at a, it's at a, um a one-off um, private mailbox place. Okay. It's a mailbox at mailing place, but then, you know, it's not a big national brand that. Okay. So um, even with, even like mailboxes, et cetera, or US uh, PS post office boxes, um, you kind of want to stray from, you really want to get what's called a virtual office address. I'm pretty sure what you, from how you're describing it is, is it's okay. But uh, you want something where they, if they Google it, then they see an office park and not. Oh, a... gotcha. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, we can have a one on one. 
uh, and I can dive in a little bit deeper, but that's, that's a really good question. But like I said, a lot of people are caught in this conundrum here. And that's why if you go through the process, like I'm laying it out for you here and, and save this for last, then you already have it. You, you know, you're, you'll be, uh, you'll be good to go, but great question. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions before we go on? Cool, cool, cool. So now we're ready for that business bank account. This is like one of the peaks on the way to the top, all right? So the business bank account is essential. Every business application that you put in for funding, they're going to want to know, do you have a business bank account? And having a business bank account means that you've set up the EIN, it means that you're congruent, it means that you have all your licensing, it means that you have your email, it means that you have a phone number, it means that you have a business address, it means that you have your identity. So without asking for all these things, all you have to do is say, do you have a business bank account? Because the bank is going to do the same thing and check all of these things when you go to apply. Okay, unless it's like a hometown bank, they don't really care. They just need to see, oh, you got an LLC. Cool. You got an operating agreement. Cool. But then they open it up. But most of the times, they're going to want to check all these different items. So uh, one of the things that they're going to look for in the business bank account, like I just mentioned, is your articles of incorporation. Okay, so that's what you get when you file with the state. Uh, Secretary of State, whichever state that you're in, you know, you pay your state filing fee uh, and they establish your business entity. Um, and they're gonna send you paperwork proof of that. You're gonna want that information. Uh, next thing that they're gonna ask for is the operating agreement. Now your articles of incorporation are public. You know, that's what has your business address and everything on it. But your operating agreement is private. Operating agreement establishes who are the members of your organization, uh, who are the operating officers? That's where you dictate who's the chief operating officer, who's the COO, who's the CMO, et cetera, in your organization. And these are the people that are authorized to conduct business as executives on, on your business behalf. So once the, that's why the bank needs that operating agreement, because they're going to probably issue all of your officers, either a credit card, debit card, or something like that. And they need to know, hey, this person is authorized to do so. Operating agreements are kind of, they're kind of uh, hard to come by, but I do recommend this is a, and you can write this down, it's a single member, uh, single managed um, organization, single member and single managed. Because once you have multiple managers or multiple members of your LLC, it makes funding a little more sticky. That means you got partners. That means we got to check their social. We got to check their background to make sure they're, that they're good. Single member is a lot easier. Okay, so always remember those two things. Um, so now this the second step. Now that we got all the the muckies out of the way, okay, all the the boring stuff out of the way, the paperwork, the administrator out of the way. Now we can start having a little bit of fun and getting set up with the business CRAs and getting your, your reports. Okay, so you want to run a search with each CRA, okay, to see if you're set up right now. Sometimes they pick you up. So sometimes because you've done businesses, or excuse me, you've done business with certain businesses, the CRAs will automatically pick you up because they report you to those uh, CRAs. Not in, a, not in a bad way, but you actually want this. You want, every time you get a net 30 account, you want them to report that to the business credit reporting agency so you can see a paper trail, so you can start to build your business credit. Kind of like on the personal side, going down to errands or, you know, buddies or rent a center and, you know, paying a year or two for, you know, furniture, they don't report to the credit bureaus. So when you pay it off, you have no impact to your credit. But it's also good because if you don't pay it, then, you know, they don't hurt. Actually, they, they do. They'll, they'll stick it on there if you don't pay. That's funny. They don't report the good stuff, just the bad stuff. But anyway, business credit reporting uh, reports are provided um, from Dun and Bradstreet. Okay, don't say Duns and Bradstreets. Okay, we gonna act like we know what we're talking about here today. So just say DMB if you can't get it right. But it's Dun and Bradstreet. Okay. Um, but they will give you something called a Dunn's number. That's where the S comes in. It's a Dunn's number provided by Dunn and Bradstreet. All right, I, I, gotta, I gotta make sure my people are good, okay? When they, I don't need people to say, I got my Dunn's and Bradstreet's number, okay? All right, so Experian is another one and Equifax is the next largest 
business credit reporting agency. Each report can contain up to five different credit scores. So you just want to get a good uh, understanding of each and what it means for your business. They will usually give you a good description on what that score entails and how you can improve it. So let's get approved for vendor credit. That's the next step. So vendors, uh, this is where the net 10, 15, and 30 terms come into place, but 90% of these vendors do not report to the business credit reporting agencies. You'll need to find vendors that do, okay? You don't want the rent center vendors, okay? You want the ones that are gonna say, hey, this person is paying on time, even if you don't pay, okay? You just gotta be on top of it, but you at least want everything that you're doing to report. So you get five of these accounts before you can move on to the next thing, which is store credit. So these are um, starter credit accounts because they don't care if you don't have a score yet. They don't care if you just started your business. They don't care what your personal credit is, okay? So if you try to go over to a Staples card, is what it's saying here at the last thing, if you go over to like Staples or Best Buy or one of these big chain retailers, but you don't have any starter credit account first, uh, accounts first, you're going to get denied. And then you got to wait at least 90 days to reapply for them, sometimes six months to reapply for these guys. So you always want to start with the vendors, the, I mean, the starter vendors. They don't care. They're going to give you a chance, okay? So Quill, Office, Supri Office Supplies, they report to DMB. They're a great start. Okay, so write down Quill, Office Supplies. Uline Shipping Supplies, they report to DMB as well. Another great one to get started with. Every business needs shipping supplies. They need some tape or something, <laughs> okay? And Granger, they report to DMB as well. You can get a lot more things at Granger that you can probably use around your home, okay? So I would not say buy something. You need to, excuse me, you need to spend at least $100 at each one of these vendors. Sometimes it's like $80, but I say just go ahead and set aside $100 for each vendor. Um, go ahead and, and, uh, and order $100 worth of stuff and then immediately go ahead and pay them. So that way you immediately have $100 for your paid X score because you paid early. Okay. Granger, um, we end up picking up a, a weed whacker, you know, and I just paid that off. And that was like one of my first starter accounts but I still use that for the house, you know? So that's just an example, but don't buy something and not use it. You know, I'm a big proponent of spending money and getting some use out of it. Don't just spend money just to report, that's crazy. All right, try to find a use for it. Uh, I know they sell like paper towels and, you know, paper, uh, trash bags and things like that. So you try to do that, try to use that. Okay, there are two alternatives to using vendor accounts. Okay, so we have the Nobe Money Business Credit Finance Suite and unsecured business funding. So instead of starting off with, you know, just building up those vendor accounts, you can get started with the Business Credit Finance Suite. We're actually going to walk you through some, uh, some other steps that you can do. But uh, unsecured business funding is the primary vehicle that we use to help you bypass starter credit. So we are helping people get approved for up to 150,000, zero percent financing. Startups are welcome, no cash flow collateral requirements. Uh, 700 FICO score is required, and grantors are welcome. That's a cosigner. So if you have a cosigner, we can kind of start bypassing the vendor accounts. But I still recommend that everybody still go and get the vendor accounts anyway, even if you can get the unsecured business funding, even if you can get the Nobe Money Business Credit Finance Suite with that $50,000 guarantee. Okay, we'll get more into that finance suite in just a moment, but I just want to show you what the, um, the steps to really building out a complete business credit profile are. So step four, this is where you can finally go on to those vendor, the, the, um, the store and the revolving accounts, like the Target, the Staples, the Best Buys, the Lowe's. Once you have five starter accounts reporting, you log into your credit reporting agency, you see boom, 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 boom. They are at five reporting. Cool. Now I can go to the second uh, tier, which is the revolving credit. Okay. So you need those five accounts first. Uh, some of these companies do have a time in business requirement, okay? And they usually use the, the, uh, the uh, incorporation date that you filed with the state. That'll be your, um, your start date. 
Okay, so just make sure you're keeping your annual records and you're keeping your annual fees with your state current. Otherwise, you can't prove you know that you're even in business anymore. Okay, so most of these stores they want to see you in business for at least a year. But to get your starter accounts going, it usually only takes a month or two. And the rest of the time, you're just waiting out the one year mark so that you can do that. But our business credit finance suite will give you all of the different stores, all their different requirements, so you can apply very, very, very easy. Okay. So next is getting that fleet credit. Okay, we got to get gassed up. We, we got places to go. We got people to see. We got money to make. All right. And if you're doing business in just your town alone, you're missing out. So you know you got to get on the road. You know you got to hit up different towns, different cities. You got to go to different trade shows to get your product out there. You got to network with other entrepreneurs. I can guarantee you right now the person that you need to meet to take your business to the next level is not in your city right now, okay? But when you're traveling, let's use business credit to travel, all right? So now that you have 10 revolving store accounts, let's go ahead and get that fleet credit build up. So those are gas cars. They help you to buy, maintain, and repair vehicles. So companies like Chevron, QT, and BP, they're going to help you gas up, all right? So you, I just want you to get excited because you're going places, all right? And once you're responsible with fleet credit, you could move on to cash credit. Somebody type cash credit in the comment section because that's the pinnacle. That's where you want to get. That's the highest level of business credit. Actually, there's one more level called corporate credit, but this is where we, this is good for now. This is the highest level that we want to get for now is cash credit. All right. Let me see where my big dog is at. Who, who's a big dog in the chat? Wani says cash credit. Michelle says cash credit. That's right. All right. Thank you so much for contributing to the fun because it's all about that cash, man. Jamil says cash credit. That's what I want. Shitara says cash credit. Quinetta, I see you. All right, Jess. She says she wants cash credit. That's that Visa, MasterCard, Amex. That's right, Kay Parker. You want that cash credit because this is where you can spend it just like any other credit card that you have. See, with the previous store credit cards, that's right, Gerald. With the previous store credit cards, you can only spend a Best Buy credit card at Best Buy. <laughs> okay. What if I need to, you know, get it from somewhere else? That's right, Carol. What if I need to get, you know, this exclusive thing? What if I need to go to a certain merchant? Uh, what if I need to use that credit card to buy out some, some liquidated assets for my competition that ain't got business credit? You need a credit card to do that. Okay. So this is where that comes in. Uh, but you have this build up everything else so that that way you can keep your social off of these applications and they can use just your business credit alone. Okay. So use your EIN on these applications only. All right. So that's really the pinnacle of it all. You know, once you can show that you're legitimate, you just want to make that vendor feel comfortable. You know, your startup, listen, that's your dream. That's your baby. Okay. Your business is your baby. You know, it started off from a dream that you were passionate about probably when you were, you know, a child. And right now it's probably unreal that you're even starting the business. Um, or maybe some people you're still afraid to really go in there and start that business. But once you do the steps that I'm showing you and you detach from your business and you start to, to mold this business into its own person, its own entity that can do things on its own, just like a teenager when they graduate from high school, hopefully you help them piggyback off of your credit. Hopefully you taught them some things so they can go out and get their own credit. And now they're out buying cars and they don't need to ask you to be a co-signer. You don't want your business to ask you to be a co-signer. You want your business to have its own credit. But we can help even with all the steps that I just laid out. It's still going to be difficult because as an entrepreneur, sometimes we're the least organized people on the planet. OK, we got receipts over here. We got invoices over here. We got people's half made products over there. You know, and then we are doing a webinar over here to sell some more products, which is all over the place. OK, can I get a witness? Just put a thumbs up in the chat if that sounds like you. You're just arms everywhere. Just right. So now I say, hey, you need to come here and be organized and build this, build that, build this. You have 15 days to do that. You have 30 days to do that. You're like, you know what? It's too much. OK, that's where the no Bay money business credit building suite comes in, because 46 percent of small business owners are using their personal credit. Now, it also we covered this 
personal credit, once you max that out, is going to hurt you. And it's going to hurt your business's chance of success too. What we do is help you build that business credit profile separate from your personal profile in seven easy steps. We have three components inside of it. You're going to get personal soft credit software for an entire year. This software uses artificial intelligence to create your dispute letters. How crazy is that? You know, so now when you're sending it out, it's, it's smart letters. You know, we've had somebody that was trying for over three years to get a collection account removed within one month, one round of letters generated by our AI technology, that the account was gone. You know, I'm about to post that maybe tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Then you get the business credit builder. It has a $10,000 value because not only does it give you the business credit suite for training, meaning all everything that I just showed you, it's going to give you a website that's going to help organize that. And you can check off one thing when it's done. Hey, I got my EIN number. What's next? Hey, I've got my... Um, I got my business bank account. Okay, cool. What's next? Okay, now I'm going to get in my next vendor account. Boom. And it keeps going down the line and it unlocks the next module when you're ready for it. Because we don't, we're, we already have too many things on our plate. Just tell me what the next thing I need so I can dominate. Not only does it give you that back office, but it also gives you a business credit advisor, certified business credit advisor. So that way, if you have a question, instead of calling Jerry, because he don't ever answer the phone, because he's always doing webinars and stuff, okay, as you heard people call it in, you know, but now from nine to five, I can call somebody at our call center and get my questions answered right away. You can't do that with these guru trainings that they try to sell you on YouTube. You can't just call up somebody, okay? But also, they're going to be calling you. So now it becomes an accountability thing. As an entrepreneur, a business owner, you can't fire yourself for not doing the work, right? So who's to hold you accountable for building your business credit? Nobody. It's just a desire. It's just a dream, right? But now if you have somebody calling you and saying, hey, just calling to make sure that you were able to get that net 30 account. Uh, I know you really need this for your business. When do you think you can have that done? And they're kind of coaching you and motivating you to get that done by the next call. Now you're, get, you're getting results. This is the same way that the personal trainer in the gym is able to help you get results, even though you know how to use the equipment. You start working out with a trainer, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, snap, I got six pack. Hold up. Hold up. All right. They're helping you get the results because they see what you can't see and they help motivate you to that next step. That right there alone is worth, I think, this entire business credit suite, having that personal accountability partner. But we're going to help you with the 411 listing as well because you got to get listed on that. Uh, Dun and Bradstreet activation, fixed damage business credit because listen, Crooks out there know about business credit before you do. We've had people to come into the suite only to realize that somebody else had been using their EIN number. Wow, what do you do now? Absolutely nothing. But if you have our business credit suite, we have a team of advisors that can help correct that for you. All right, so you get all of that. Then we top it off the cherry on top, 50K in funding. Someone put 50K if that's you. If you could do, if you could use 50K for your business, type 50K in the comment section so we can make sure that we um, we recognize the people that really need the, not just need the money, but know what to do with it. It's one thing to need it. It's another thing to know what you would do with it. Like I, I need equipment. I need to be able to finance this this huge order that that's coming in. We help we helped a doctor get 30,000 in funding, just 30,000. He turned that into a million dollars worth of orders in just 30 days. That's right, Lay. That's what I'm talking about, Cornetta. Michelle, I see you. Jamie, I see you. Juani, that's right, Kay. That's right, Sid. Tell him, man. Chitara, come on, man. You, you know you need, you know what to do with that 50K, right? So lending resources, secure cash funding, business credit cards, net 30 accounts, revolving accounts, no personal guarantee. We show you how to do it all. Now, I hope you all are ready for the price on this course that we have here for you, because we really, really did bring that down. Uh, you're, I mean, you're looking at over $60,000 worth of value for $24.95 one time. We even have a payment plan and we have a no money down system as well. This is how a lot of people are getting started. A lot of people are getting started on no money down. Let me tell you about that no money down because I don't even want you to spend $2,500 right out of your pocket. I don't want you to do that. Well, I want you to start getting used to using OPM because that's why you got started anyway because you want to leverage OPM, other people's money. So now we're going to be able to help you leverage OPM 
in order to get this program and much more. See, when you get this program, the, the, when you'll qualify for this no money down program, you can qualify for up to 10,000, even though you only need 2,500. You can qualify for up to 10,000, your payments will be like $200 a month, right? So as long as you're, you're able to take this money and, and spend a block and generate more than $200 a month with it, this is a win-win. So now you got 10,000, you take 2,500, invest in this program, now you got 7,500 left. What do you do with that 7,500? Well, you got net 30 accounts that you can invest in. You need a, a business bank account that you need to dump some money in. So now you're going to put that in your business bank account. Now what the bank sees, this person got $7,500 already in their bank account. This is great. Let's give them some money. Okay. So now not only did you leverage the 10,000 to get this suite so we can show you how to get the 50K, but now you use the rest of the money and you put that in your business bank account and you look more lendable because you had more startup money to start your business. This is, this is just smart, okay? This is the missing link. This is the missing link between you and the success of your business that you've been after, especially for my people that already had a business. They've been having a business for like five plus years. They're not really growing their revenue, but they're just barely hanging on. I know it's tough because half of all businesses fail after five years, mainly due to the lack of access to capital. So that's the reason why you're not growing. In business, if you're not growing, you're dying, unfortunately, because inflation is going to start eating you up. Inflation just means the cost of doing business is going up. If you're not raising your prices, if the consumers aren't paying for that increase in your prices, that means you're going out of business really soon. It's only a time, only a matter of time. But now that you have other people's money, you can leverage that and you can grow your business. You can scale your business. You can open up a new location. OK, uh, but let's say you don't need the full 10. You're like, hey, that's cool and everything, but I don't need the full 10. Let's just take the 25 payments as low as 100 bucks. We had somebody get approved for $80 a month. Come on now. So I just want to let you know it's real. You know, you can even Google it. You'll see the results. Nobody money testimonials. We're really out here. We have on our webpage, we have testimonials from a few people here. Let's listen to Brian. Hello, Flynn. my name is Brian. I want to let everyone know that, hey, this is a very, very great product. In funding suite, I received great, great service from my business credit coach, as well as my financial consultant who walked me through all the funding that my business could get approved for um awesome product i was able to obtain my 50k within a matter of uh three to excuse me three to four months and i'm pretty sure that that i am going to be sending many many clients your way for helping me uh with the funding that i needed for my That's business right. uh with the business credit suite and funding suite thank, thank you very you. much thank you brian oh right. it's great to hear from you that's my man, Brian, from Spring Hill Financial. He has a, a financial uh, consultant firm out there. We have more, though. We have Trucker over here. Um, he was able to go ahead and get his box truck going, box truck business going, still in business to this day. All right. We helped uh, Demarcus Taylor and his partner get fine, uh, to get money for a multi-unit investment property. So we can even help you get money to fund your commercial investing business. Okay. That's what we got it. Listen, we all know real estate ain't going nowhere. All right. We just need the money to get it. I'm not sure how many people are in the real estate that are here, Airbnb or, you know, even we even help Toro drivers get financing for their vehicles. And since it's not in their personal name, it's not going to hurt their personal credit. It's, it's just genius. All right. So I just want to let you know that they're really out here, uh, really making a difference. But, you know, even if you wanted to just come in here and just say, like, hey, you know, I want to actually help other people do what you guys are doing, then you can definitely come in here and become an affiliate with this and, and help other people. Because maybe you're somebody that people come to and they're always asking you, hey, I need to be able to get money. I need to be able to start my business. How did you start your business? I want to be able to start my business, too. You know the headache that it took you through to do this. So just the thought of trying to guide somebody else through this is, is just unreal to some people. But now you can come in here, you can be a membership, uh, a member with us, only $199 to be an affiliate, $49 a month. You'll get a discount on that business credit suite. You'll get a, a $500 discount on that business credit suite. So it'll only be $19.95 instead of $24.95. Um, and if you also want to build a team, then you can do that as well. 
for $350 and then $99 a month. And we'll throw in some extra benefits like the, uh, the uh, AI technology for your uh, credit building. And it's also a tax deduction as well. So remember, when you if you buy this and then spend the $19.95 on the business credit suite, it's all a tax write-off because you're using, I mean, you're spending money to help grow your business. You know, so right now we got you know, three types of people. Some people say they're not interested. Those are the people that fell off in the first like five minutes. They're like, you know what? I just, I just don't even have time to learn how to grow my business. Those people are already gone. So if you're still here, you're probably number two saying, hey, I'm interested, but I have some questions. You know, how did this exactly work? Or how did that no money down thing work? Or, you know, how many accounts do I need again before I can move on to fleet credit? Let's get those questions answered. Number three says, hey, I'm ready to get started. How I enroll and get started today. Okay, so if you're one of those people, get back with your financial consultant. They're going to guide you to the website, show you exactly how to enroll. So you just click, you're just basically just like retail therapy, okay? <laughs> Except this is actually going to help you grow your business. You can also apply for that no money down program right there. There's no cost to apply and it doesn't even hurt your credit. So we do a soft pool instead of a hard inquiry because we understand that hard inquiries hurt your credit. And we are a company that helps promote your credit. So why would we do that, right? So we even have a system that you can do the, uh, get the quick qualification with no hard credit check. Once that comes through, we're gonna say welcome to Nove in the financial future that you truly deserve. All right, so what questions do we have everybody? I know somebody has at least one question because that's a lot of information, a lot of powerful information. I know when I first got started, I was just like, you know, what the, <laughs> you know, I had to know so many different things. Um, but, you know, I had a, just an amazing team. Just an amazing team. You know, they taught me everything I know. And uh, we either want to help you become a professional or help you professionally get help. So I was asking earlier, is it possible to, um, once you establish your business credit, can you piggyback your personal to your business? Um, can you piggyback your personal credit to your business? It's a yes and a no question. It's a yes and a no answer. So the yes part means that you can actually use your personal credit score to now get qualified for some of those uh, business credit cards, you know, especially if you don't have any business credit at all, you can use your personal score to get that business credit card. But now that business credit card does not report back to your personal. So that's why I said yes and a no. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. It does. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once you get that 750, you can open up doors. You know, I'd say 70, 750 and above. Go ahead and get that business credit card. And um, you can do that. You can skip all the steps that I just showed, showed uh, I shared with you. Um, but that business credit card is not going to go back and report to your personal. All right. Good question, though. Excellent question. Go ahead, Lay. You say you have a question about a topic from earlier. Go ahead and shoot. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I have a question about earlier. Um, I want to know the pros and cons of limited liability company versus limited liability partnership when it comes to funding, tax deduction, tax deductions, and tax write-offs. Great, great question. And you know, just to set it off, if I could choose to. I mean, you would have to twist my arm, step on my foot and throw me on a train track to start a limited liability partnership. Okay, partnerships are a wreck when it's, trying to, when it's time to get funding. Um, and the main reason why I know that is because I, you know, I do this all the time where I, I hold consultations with people and we try to help them get funding. And the ones that have partnerships, you know, there's a lot more verification that goes into it because anybody that has a significant hold in the business, uh, 50 and 50, especially if it's split down the middle, they're going to want to know information about the other partner. And most times the other partner has different plans for their business or they don't want their credit ran or they don't want, you know, to be in debt. They just, you know, it's kind of impossible to get two people to move on the same accord, even though they have a partnership. You know, it's, it just blows my mind. I'm like, how do you go into a business with this person that doesn't have the same mindset as you? So um, I would just say try to avoid that. A limited liability company, 
just a single member uh, limited, limited liability company is the easiest way because it's only focused on you and you can control what you do. You can control your credit. You can get better credit. Um, you know what your background is. Believe it or not, some lenders, they're not going to lend to you if you have a felony. So now you got to worry about this other person out here running the streets or, you know, making sure that they have um, excellent business ethics so that they don't get in trouble and jammed up, which is going to hurt your entire business. Um, so that's, that's really what I would recommend. But sometimes you can't avoid it. You know, they put the money in, so they're a partner now. Uh, but how I would do that is I would own the LLC. And if you have an equity partner, some, someone that's putting up all the money, they don't have to be an owner on record. They can be in your operating agreement and have a role in your business. And also you can have a private contract with them as well that's off the record that says, hey, if I ever sell this business, this right here would be your share. And that could be a private contract between you and somebody else. That's not, that doesn't have to be disclosed. Okay. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, Kay, well, you have a, go ahead. Well, a question um, about question about the um that same um train of thought so your my current um formation is a llc um with a partnership with my son who is an inactive member and mm -hmm. i did that for lack of having a trust just to have another partner in the in the business he's actually inactive so are you suggesting or what i'm inferring is that I should go ahead and redraft it and just have it a single partner, single yeah. operator? Because that's that's one of the things that I'm that I'm referring to is that other partner, maybe they just don't want to run the business anymore. Right. You know, they they get either they start doing their own thing or they lose interest, or again, their desires change. People change, even you change from time to time. So you don't you can't really depend on somebody else to just stay true for life. Um, but yeah, in that kind of instance, you would, and especially with the issue with the EIN, uh, yeah, I would kind of just start over. Um, you know, and use it. I watch a lot of um, Shark Tank and mm -hmm. just yeah, a, 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 just um, like a s survey that I've taken over the years, it seems that they are less interested in working with um single owners single owner operators because if that person is the job the talents the whole thing and something happens to them them then their whole investment is lost so i'm th i was thinking that that same thing would apply to llc versus sole proprietor you know if you go for funding and you're the only person that's on the hook and something happens to you and you know we're all promised to die then that bank or finance company lending creditor would be out that money. Yeah, so that's a great question. It's a great um, uh, presentation because you're right. When it's just one person, you're putting so much risk on that one person. Um, so I guess the best way to explain it is from your standpoint, it's really hard and it's difficult. From the lender standpoint, they love to see that. They love to spread the risk out with two people because instead of just coming after one person, right? I can come after two people, right? Right. Now that is if you set it up that way, because a lot of the times when we set up business credit the way that I'm prescribing to you, they're not going to come after the people; they're going to come after the business itself. But what this means is, while you're setting up and getting qualified for the business uh, uh, for the business funding, now they can see that there's two people with with a really good financial standing, and that will help improve your chances and improve the amount of money that you can get as well. Because now you have two people's incomes to base the money off of. But from your standpoint, it's going to be very difficult. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, with your son, it's going to be more difficult to get him on board, get him on the phone, get him to sign paperwork. But the lender loves it. Hey, I don't care. I'm, if I'm a lender, it don't bother me to do two applications and put them together. You know, so great question. Great. Um, great uh, postulation. 
Okay, who's next? Um, Kay, you had a question, a question emoji. That's one of my favorite guys right here. What you got? Kay Parker. And then we'll go to Michelle. Okay, maybe her question got answered. Go ahead, Michelle. So if I'm hearing you right in, in all that we've learned today, actually, business funding is like an insurance policy. In, in certain aspects, where one, it doesn't it doesn't hurt you personally, if someone you know if, if there's a debt and they come after the business and not you, or uh, if there is something about your personal credit, it's not going to affect your business. So in a way, it's a dual a dual uh, insurance policy, right? I can see how you could say that. Yeah, it's like a protection. It's like a buffer between you and uh, and the lenders. You know, having business funding in the middle, it protects you from getting sued. Now, I will say, once you if you if you PG something, meaning you put your social security on it, more than likely you are personally guaranteeing it. Meaning that if something happened in the business, then they could come after you because they have your social. They could report you because they have your social. Uh, but that's only on a few accounts in the beginning. Eventually, we want to say no PG at all. It's completely on my business if something happens that I cannot pay this debt back. But but yeah, you have a, a nice buffer between there. You got to. You got to because not only are you going to get approved for more. So like if I went to Best Buy and I and I applied for a personal credit card to give me a five hundred thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. Now, if I go in there, and apply as a business, they're going to give me. 10,000, 15, 20,000, because I'm going to need, as a person, I might need one computer. I might need one screen. But as a business, I'm going to need 10 screens, 10 computers for my employees. So my limits are going to be higher uh, on a business credit application than on a personal. You know, so I definitely, once you go through this program, I want you to, I want to invite you to do that. Like, go ahead and get the SAMS credit with your personal and then come back the next day and do it in your business name and check your limits. <laughs> it's going to be much, much higher. So not only is it in a buffer, but it, it expands your borrowing capability as well. So great, great, um, great uh, observation on that. But yeah, how many people are excited about what you learn? You know, I think that when I first learned this, it, it was just like, there's a whole underworld of credit that we didn't even know about. The more you use on personal credit, the more it hurts you when you max out that card. The more you use on business credit, they don't care that it's maxed out. In fact, as long as you keep paying the bill on time, they're just going to give you more money because you have an engine. You're not a person just buying trash you know, with the money, you're a business investing it and making more money. Credit card companies want to give you more money because they get to charge you more, more interest. You know, if they're charging you 6% interest on $1,000, that's cool. But as long as you're paying it off, they'll bump it up to 10. Now they're charging you 6% interest on $10,000. That's really what they want. They want to give you more money, but they don't want to give a consumer money the consumer not going to pay it back. The more I give you, the less chance I'm going to get that back, Jack. You know? So um, the no, no Money Business Credit Suite, get back to the person that got you on here. You know, so you can get started with that. Remember, we have a No Money Down program. I truly believe that this is essential for any business owner, no matter how long ago you got started, no matter if you haven't even got started yet. That way you can get started right in the right way. Have a business credit advisor. And remember, we top it off and guarantee at least 50,000 in funding, which means we're gonna to continue to work with you until you get at least $50,000 in funding for your business, essential, essential, because a lot of these gurus out here, they don't make promises. They say, hey, we're gonna give you access to a bunch of videos. You get those videos, you get that course, you never watch it. <laughs> Why? Because no one's holding you accountable. You get this here, you're not only going to get a course that's organized, but you'll have an accountability partner that's going to help call you, keep you on track, and guarantee that you're going to get funding. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for coming on out and spending, wow, hours, 17 minutes with us, kicking it. 
Um, if you're interested in the replay, get back with your financial consultant that puts you on. And, um, and also everybody that registered will be sending out a free business credit building guide. So stay tuned to your inbox or get back with your consultant. But other than that, you all keep building strong. Don't give up, persevere and stay consistent. We'll see you on the other side. Peace.